So Black Sexual Politics is the other book that I am reading and I'm going to give you guys a couple of passages. I like to put the book up and read at the same time. All right, so this is where I'm starting. Black sexual politics consists of a set of ideas and social practices shaped by gender, race, and sexuality that frame black men and women's treatment of one another, as well as how African Americans are perceived and treated by others. Such politics lie at the heart of beliefs about black masculinity and black femininity, of gender specific experiences of African Americans, and of forms, um, and of forms that the new racism takes in the post-civil rights era. To confront social inequality, African Americans need an analysis of Black masculinity and Black femininity that questions the link between prevailing sexual politics, their connection to Black gender ideology, and the struggles for Black for African American empowerment in response to the new racism. Taking into account the new challenges of the post-civil rights era, such an analysis would strive to point the way toward a more progressive Black sexual politics within African American communities. This politics might turn, um, the, this politics in turn might both catalyze a more effective anti-racist politics and contribute to a broader social agenda. All right, I bring that up because this is in the introduction. But how do we get to this point where we're having such conflicts and trying to pinpoint um, black masculinity and black femininity? Okay, let's jump into the book. All right, so this is um, in The Political Economy of Chattel Slavery. I'm gonna start towards the bottom, that's in green. Chattel slavery also relied upon gender oppression. Within the political economy of chattel slavery, this process of objectification, commodification, and exploitation took different forms for African-American women and men. Black women were workers like men, but and they did hard manual labor. But because they were women, black women's sexuality and reproductive capacity presented opportunities for forms of sexual exploitation and sexual slavery, ultimate submission of the master-slave relationship. All right, so you guys can continue to read the rest of that. I do want to pull out this piece, though. For example, objectifying Black women agricultural workers as mules justified working them as if they were animals. The institutionalized grape of enslaved women spawned the controlling image of Jezebel or sexually wanton Black women.